Hey guys, today I want to run you through the 15 books I was able to read in August and let you know which ones you should add to your reading list. So let's jump right into it. The first one was The Talisman by Sir Walter Scott. This is a book that is on something I've mentioned before. It's the 12 Great Christian Novels list from Memoria Press, which is our homeschool curriculum. And my wife and I have been going through these. This one was super interesting because I read an abridged version of it and I really liked it, but I got done with it, and I was like, I don't get why it was on this list. And then I went back and read what uh, Martin Cothran had to say about it. He was talking about it being this whole great dialogue between the Christian and the Muslim religions, and I was like, I didn't get any of that from this book. And so I talked to Kim about it. She had read the full fat book and she was like, oh yeah, that was in all of these parts where the two guys were having a conversation. And I was like, oh, in my version of the book, that part was like five seconds long. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so I need to go back and reread the full version of this book. But story-wise and just the plot points that I got from the abridged young readers version, I really enjoyed it. And so that's definitely one I would throw into borrow it for sure. Next, we had The Trader's Wife. This was one I listened to the audiobook of. It was something a friend recommended to me. It's the story of of Benedict Arnold's wife and the role that she played in leading him to betray the country. So it was interesting. I enjoyed it. It was much more about the relationship between her and him and her and the, uh, I forget his name now, but the, the red coat soldier who she had a relationship with before she met Benedict and a little bit less about his betrayal. And so I wasn't as interested as I was hoping I would be, but I still enjoyed it. And if it's interesting to you, I would say consider it, go for it if you want. And then Like a River by Granger Smith, Myth. I did a full video on this book. This is the story of Granger losing their son, him and his wife losing their youngest son to a drowning accident. It's his story since that time in the past couple of years where God has just come in and completely changed his whole entire life and saved him from being suicidal from this incident and everything. And it was insanely good. This one, I would kind of go back and forth between buy it and borrow it. I would say buy it. I don't think it's one you would regret having. Mine were of trouble. This is the first of the Peter Kemp trilogy. This was recommended by a subscriber. This is about an Englishman who went to fight on the nationalist side in the Spanish War right before um, World War One or right after World War One. Now I can't remember. Dang it. Now I look stupid. This was really, really interesting. I want to read the next three books because Peter's writing is really engaging and the story was really cool. And it's very interesting to see how all the Englishmen coming were actually fighting on the side of the communists and everyone who really would end up being their enemy later on. But for some reason, they thought that that was like the right side to be on during this conflict. So it was really interesting that he has kind of one of the only perspectives on this war as an Englishman going and fighting on the side of the like rebels who later on in history now we would consider to be like the good guys in, in this conflict. So I threw that one for sure in Borrow It. Next up, we had another one from a subscriber called Salt to the Sea. And this book was freaking killer. Good. I had no idea what to expect about this book, but it is a novelization of this naval incident when the Russians are coming into Germany in World War II and pushing back all the Germans out of all the towns and trying to get to Hitler so they can defeat him. It's this novelization of the survivors, basically, and all the all the people who are just caught up in collateral damage in this war. It's this intertwining of four or five different perspectives of all these young adults that are getting thrown together that come that get put on this ship that they goes on to become the biggest maritime disaster in all of history. And it's like twice the size of the number of people who died on the Titanic. Just crazy story that you read about and you're like, I had no idea. I'd never heard of any of this before. Just super, super engaging writing. This was a book I felt like I could have read in one sitting. I almost did. I, I literally almost just stayed up all night the first night that I had it. I ended up reading it in like 24 hours ac across two days, basically. But really, really, really good. I would really like to read some more of this lady's novels because I really enjoyed it. So that one. Buy it, borrow it. I would say borrow it, but you might regret it. So maybe just buy it. The Masculinity Manifesto. This is by Ryan, the guy who runs the channel Order of Man. I followed him off and on for several years now and just realized I hadn't read any of his books and that I probably should. So I grabbed it. I really enjoyed it. That one for sure goes into the buy category. If you would like more thoughts on it, got a full length video. I'll link it. 
somewhere up here. Next up, we had The Thinker's Edge. This was a short little kind of almost not really a picture book, but almost, you know, picture book format, very small, super great one-liners, good refreshers on a lot of stuff, nothing really new that you've never heard before if you've read any kind of personal development stuff, but a really nice, like, kind of just leave it on your desk and flip through it whenever you need some motivation book. Worth borrowing if you really like it, and especially if the format of it really jumps out at you, go get it if you want it. Last on his feet, I grabbed this from the library, mostly because I'm trying to branch out into reading stuff that I don't normally read and any kind of graphic novelization, manga, graphic anything is <laughs> just not normally what I read. I saw this and kind of browsed through it and the illustrations were just super, super well done and just kind of grabbed my attention like right off the bat. So I was like, well, perfect. I'll start with this one because I'm already interested in it. And it's the story of Jack Johnson, who was the world heavyweight champion in the boxing ring. It's just his story, but told through a graphic novel. And I thought it was really interesting. I read it in a day. I would probably, I would say, consider it. Um, if it's interesting to you, I don't think it would be a waste of your time. Next, we had How to Get Paid for What You Know by Graham Cochran. Graham is the guy who taught me how to mix. He was the very first person that I ever started watching mix tutorials on YouTube. And so I had kind of fallen away from watching his stuff for a couple of years and didn't realize that he is now after successfully growing the recording revolution to this crazy, crazy, awesome business. He's launched a personal brand and is now helping people build online businesses. And then he had just published this book. This was absolutely great. If you're trying to build any kind of internet business, that one's non-negotiable goes to the top of it, mostly because I love Graham and he is a person who I know from experience of having dealt with him has like verifiably done this for real, as opposed to some of these people that you look at that are like, this is how you do this. And you're like, yeah, but did you ever actually do that? Or are you just telling people how to do it? Because if you're just telling me how to do it, but you've never actually done it, eh. I don't know how I feel about that. That one's definitely non-negotiable. If you are trying to build an internet business, you have to buy that book. Hondo by Louis L'Amour. We watched Hondo as our family movie day one of the Sundays of this past month, and I realized that's one of the Louis L'Amours that I've never read. This was super interesting because I got a new version that has like the lost treasure stuff, and at the end of it, there was the short story, which is what originally started the whole storyline and what became the movie script and everything, and then a little bit of a story about how Louis used this book to really Really, like launch his whole writing career and like this book is like the thing that that launched him out of poverty and out of obscurity and put him on the path to being like yes I write westerns really really fascinating and overall I mean Hondo is just awesome I every Louis the Moore is awesome if you're a guy you should be buying Louis the Moors because they'll make you more manly so buy it for sure. Meganets by David Auerbach. This book was freaking fascinating. The premise of this book is essentially this idea that some of these things have gotten so big when you consider like Facebook or Twitter or any of these, these digital forces, even Amazon now, they've gotten so big and they've become so entwined with our lives that they literally have spun out of our control. And the people who are in charge of them don't want to admit that and don't want to talk about that. They don't know how to deal with it because these things have literally melded so much with human nature nature that now human nature is creating this feedback loop in these systems and literally just launching them out of control. David has an incredibly unique perspective on this because of working at Microsoft and working at Google and being at all these places and kind of the perfect times to be part of the launch and the creation of all these different phases of the technical world. And so his perspective is really, really interesting. The one thing that I didn't like about this book is when I got to the end and he kind of gives his recommendations for how do we how do we tame the Meganets and how do we rein them in and how do we fix the problem. What was most interesting is that he approaches it very much as a technical problem and only gives technical solutions. And the more that I looked at it, the more that I read of it, the, the clearer I felt like it became to me that this is really a human nature problem and it's just being expounded by the technological ability that we have. And so the actual fix is a human nature fix and a focus on the person and on changing people and their responses and bringing people more back in line with far more biblical principles of how to live a good life. And that's the thing that then reigns in this technical power that we have. This one, definitely, definitely at least go borrow it if you're interested in it at all. It was fascinating and I I loved it. So I would definitely recommend that one. 32 Principles by Henner Gracie. I'm not even kidding. I posted the first review 
in the world <laughs> on this book. I went out and got it the day that it came out. I'll link that video up here and I'll show you a screenshot of this now. I posted my review and then looked on Goodreads and on Amazon and I was like, I literally have the only review in the world on this book. This one I absolutely loved. The best part of this book is that they really wanted people to grasp the combat application of these principles because it just helps you understand the information so much better. And so every single chapter literally has a QR code that you can scan that goes to a four or five minute video explaining the combat application of this principle. And that unlocked so many things for me and my understanding of these principles that just reading the book just wouldn't have. And it was it was mind blowing. It was so unique. I've never read a book that that did that that way. And I absolutely loved it. I I just cannot say enough good things about that book. That's 100% non-negotiable. Go buy it. Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. This one, buy it. It's great. It's literally talking about how to bring storytelling into your brand as a whole and into how you communicate about your brand as a whole. And if you go through the exercises and you go through the free like worksheets that he has available online, it's so, so helpful to be able to place yourself in a story and be able to place yourself in your customer story and figure out what it is that you can come alongside and guide them into. And it was just really, really great. I loved it. Next up, we had the YouTube formula by Daryl Eves. This one, borrow it, but you'll probably end up buying it. That's what I would say. I borrowed this one from the library. Daryl is like one of the premier YouTube gurus on the planet. And this book is balls to the wall deep on how to do YouTube stuff. It's really, really great. It's super in-depth, but it's also it's also very engaging. And it's not, I didn't get bored at any point in it. And it doesn't ever feel so overwhelming that you're just like, oh, I don't know what to do. Like he gives you a ton of ton of information, but then he gives you a very clear path on how to move forward with all that information. So definitely like that one. Now, the last book that I read was Tress of the Emerald Sea. This is the first of the secret project novels of Brandon Sanderson. I unfortunately wasn't able to be part of the Kickstarter for these. So I've just been having to get them as they show up at the library. This one showed up. It was great. If you're a Brandon Sanderson fan, just buy it. If you aren't, definitely go to the library and pick it up because it'll probably turn you into a Brandon Sanderson fan. It was really really, really fun. I super enjoyed it. But I know for some of you, that cover is way too girly looking. And so if you need a more manly looking story that you can really dig into for this coming month, uh, click this video somewhere around here. And I've got three of the manliest stories that you will ever read here. So go ahead and watch that. And I'll see you guys in the next video.